Gonna have to do a lot better than that. You see, I've been doing a little bit of math and chemistry and been able to make my skin effectively bulletproof like Luke Cage. But wanna know how I did it? It's like Luke Skywalker. Luke Cage is a superhero with both incredible strength and incredible skin. At least in Netflix's version of him, he has survived shotgun blasts to the face and explosions and all manner of gunfire. But how strong would your skin have to be to repel bullets, and how could you make it like that? Many of you who have asked me this question, asked me questions on Twitter, have pointed out that skin density is the source of Luke Cage's powers. However, adding more mass to the same volume of skin, which would increase its density, is unlikely to do anything for you. If anything, it's going to be adding to your skin weight, not skin strength. Instead, let's start off with what we know Luke Cage's skin can resist and work from there. Here is human skin. It has three layers, epidermis, dermis, and subcutis of Borg. And what it needs to resist in Luke Cage's case is pressure, or the force of an object acting over a certain area. In Luke Cage's case, his skin has to resist the force of a bullet acting over the area of skin that it's trying to push through, which basically looks like the inside of a cylinder. Oh. Oh. All we need to do is estimate a few numbers and then work out the strength of Luke Cage's skin. All right, watch this. It's gonna be like Superman Returns. Oh. Oh. Ah. One of the most used bullets in the world is the 9mm. It comes in many different varieties, but on average, it has a diameter of 9mm, weighs around 8 grams, and comes out of a gun with a velocity of 360 meters per second. Now, if Luke Cage's skin is bulletproof, then the 9mm bullet should come to a stop before it makes it all the way through it's maybe two millimeters of thickness. So let's say maybe it doesn't even go past the thickness of a human hair or 0.05 millimeters in just one millisecond. Now we can do the math. If a bullet that weighs eight grams moving at 360 meters per second comes to a stop within one millisecond while trying to punch out a hole of Luke Cage's skin that's nine millimeters in diameter and less than a human hair thickness deep, then Luke Cage's skin strength is being able to handle two giga pascals or two billion newtons per square meter. And because Luke Cage can handle more than just nine millimeter fire, his skin has to be even stronger than this. A material that can resist a lot of pressure like this is said to have a high ultimate tensile strength. And if Luke Cage's skin can handle billions of pascals of pressure, then his ultimate tensile strength is above spider silk, it's above diamond, and it's right around this weird chemical you may have heard of, Kevlar. Coming up with the same ultimate tensile strength as Kevlar is great because it confirms our calculations, but it also lets us say why Luke Cage's skin is so strong. Kevlar is made up of a long chain of molecules, and those chains, called polymers, sit together parallel and form a crystalline structure. It kind of looks like uncooked spaghetti in a box. And that crystalline structure is held together by hydrogen bonds, some of the strongest bonds in nature. All of this comes together to help make Kevlar bulletproof. So maybe during the experiments that turned Luke Cage into the superhero that he is, the mad scientist inserted a Kevlar-like molecule into his skin layers. Look under a microscope and it might look like this. So, even after everything that we assumed, Luke Cage's skin is at least as strong as Kevlar, which makes total sense, and it's not even that crazy that some scientist could insert a Kevlar-like molecule into his skin to give it that strength. However, Luke Cage's strength is only skin deep. No, seriously, anything that moves your interior organs around, like the pressure wave from a shotgun blast to the face or an explosion, would still kill Luke Cage. Uh, but I'd love to have impenetrable skin, because then I'd be immune to bees. A true superpower. Because science. Because be. Yep.
And hey, have you grabbed yourself a copy of Warcraft on Blu-ray and 4K Ultra UHD yet? If you've yet to book your return trip to Azeroth, let me remind you that it's in Dolby Atmos with moving audio, meaning that if you've got a premium sound setup at home, you can experience the action epic with insane, deep, three-dimensional sound that just might convince your brain that the horde is invading your living room. I don't know about you, but that's pretty much all I could ever hope for. So if you're like me, you want to grab Warcraft on Blu-ray ASAP and Lucky for us, it's available right now with Dolby Atmos Moving Audio. Thank you so much for watching. At Colonel Guthrie asks, what might cause werewolves to transform during a full moon? <sighs> okay, I have a problem with werewolves uh, because the moon is always full. The moon, the moon is al it's always, th it's always all there. It just depends on the amount of light shining on it from the shadows, so a full moon isn't obscured in any way, so that's a, more light, but light comes off the, it's, the moon's always there. If you're gonna change and you see the moon, then you gotta always change. You will always be a werewolf. You're never gonna be, like and subscribe. Because a bullet only has eight grams of mass, the amount of pressure it can exert, even on a very small area, isn't crazy. Let me put it this way. Jessica Jones, if she jumped off a building, when she hit the ground in her stilettos, because she has so much more mass than a single bullet, when her stiletto hit the ground, the ground would experience a pressure that would pierce Luke Cage's skin based on what we calculated in this episode. Yeah, the math works out, and it's crazy. Let's see if they incorporate that into season two. Binge, see, call me Netflix. <laughs>